All right, ladies and gents, welcome to this video. My name is Taylor Bentrude, and we're gonna talk about hiring your first virtual assistant. This is the most legendary and amazing thing you can do, especially if you're running an agency, any type of business or a side hustle, whatever you're doing, it is so amazing. It'll save you so much time, and the work quality that'll get done will generally be better than you, if not the exact same quality, if you train this person well on what you need help with. So this question, uh, this video idea came from Noise. He's currently at $10,000 per month, by himself in his agency, and he's looking to hire uh, someone overseas. He's asking, how do you find this person? Um, how much work do you give them? How, like, who do you hire, etc. all those things. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video because I think many of you watching this also may wanna hire a virtual assistant. Our agency, Better AMS, we currently have three, maybe four people um, in the Philippines, virtual assistants, although you could classify them as otherwise uh, data assistants, data analysts. I mean, there's many different uh, terms you could give them, uh, but in general, they're just amazing people to work with and they're gonna save you a ton of time. So we, my first virtual assistant hired actually at $10,000 per month. So the moment you should hire someone is pretty much step number one, do the math. If you can afford to hire someone, great. Um, but do the math first and know how much you can afford. So basically, what is your budget, okay? If it's $300 per month, great. You're probably looking at hiring somebody part-time or potentially just hourly. Hourly is the best starting out. I recommend everybody starts out with hourly. That is the best place to start. Um, don't start out part-time, don't start full-time, especially if it's your first hire, just start hourly. Okay, we'll get into how much you can pay them in a minute here, but start hourly. Then you need to also do the math on how much work you can actually give this person. So if you think you have a budget of $300, well, can you give them 100 hours worth of work, assuming that you're gonna be paying them $3 per hour? Uh, how much work can you actually give them? Obviously, the more work that you have that you can outsource and delegate, the better, so long as you can actually afford to delegate it. Again, but it's pretty negligible. The, the labor in the Philippines is much cheaper. The cost of living is much cheaper, so the salaries are very different. $3 per hour is a very decent starting salary. There's people we've hired who came from jobs where they were making $1 per hour. Um, so even two is like, two is pretty low from what I understand, but three is, is very decent starting out. Four or five is, is great. So it's pretty negligible and you should be able to afford it even if you're only doing a couple thousand dollars per month in your agency. So step two, uh, write a simple job post. Now, this is very simple. Who should you hire, in my opinion, starting out noise? This is to, to you who answered this question. It should be basically probably a general virtual assistant that you can train to outsource and delegate um, tasks that you could do and outsource very easily to pretty much anybody on earth. Um, and that's where I would start. More complex things that requires uh, creativity and uh, like building systems, I would not try to outsource or delegate at all, um, for, especially for your first one. Just stuff that is pretty much um, starting out very basic repetitive tasks and then you can move up to more complicated and complex things as time progresses and you gain more confidence. Um, but starting out, just writing a simple job post. This is our online jobs.ph account. By the way, this is the website I recommend for actually finding talented virtual assistants or anybody. I mean, you can find so much more than a virtual assistant on uh, this website. You can find SEO specialists, PPC specialists. I don't have any experience hiring those kinds of people um, offshore, but uh, virtual assistants, absolutely. So this is our job post that we posted recently. Actually, let me pull up a previous one. This is one here. And let me actually pull up this one here. So this is one that we put, and it's very simple. We're looking to hire an Amazon PPC expert specialist who can come onto our team to help us create this. It's literally like six sentences and it's as simple as that. And then we have the skill, Amazon product ads and office admin, etc. So you can be more detailed if you want, but whatever you're planning on hiring this person for, just detail uh, it in the job overview. And one of the most important things you can do, because when you're looking to hire a virtual assistant, you're gonna get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications, is put in this little secret message which will <laughs> filter out the automated responses that people sometimes do. You wanna, you wanna at least look and vet people who have looked at your application and read it. So to know if they read your application or your, your job post, uh, you can say, hey, please, uh, where is it here? 
say the word Amazon in the beginning of your application. So you can see how this is kind of hidden in here. It kind of doesn't really make any sense. It's in the middle of nowhere. But if they don't say the word Amazon when they apply for the job, um, you can just completely filter it and not look at it. Now, if you're hiring for a very niche position or you really need people, you can look at every single applicant, that's fine. But if you're just hiring a general virtual assistant, I highly recommend saying some little secret word. You can make the word whatever you want, but it'll be much easier for you to filter through and look at uh, people who actually took the time to read your job, app, uh, your job overview. And generally speaking, these people have more uh, attention to detail since they read the actual job application. So onlinejobs.ph is great. When you create a job post, I'm not even gonna show you how to do it, but you can do type of work, part-time, full-time, hourly. You can put in the salary range. If it's an hourly, you'll put in the dollar amount per hour. It'll ask you if you wanna, uh, you only look at people who have the highest proof of ID. I don't think it's, it matters too much to be honest with you. And that's pretty much it. You can also select some basic skills. I first, for us, we just need somebody who's uh, good with Excel, Google Sheets, Office and Admin type stuff, and has decent experience or a little bit of experience with Amazon advertising. Now, for you, you can make that job post. It's very easy. Use onlinejobs.ph. You will have to sign up. I think it might be like 50 bucks a month or 75 bucks a month or something, but you can only sign up for, you can sign up for one month and then get rid of it. So your cost of finding and hiring this person will literally be like $75, which is insane, very cheap, and it's amazing. Um, now, when it comes to the most important things that this person should have, in my opinion, it's simply Wi-Fi laptop and great English, okay? If you hire somebody with great Wi-Fi, if you hire somebody that has a good laptop and they speak great English, those are the three foundations, okay? Now, on top of that foundation is whatever else. If you're missing those three things, it's not gonna be a pleasant experience. You need to have those three things and then whatever comes next. So for us, we, again, like I said, we needed someone with experience with Excel, someone with experience with Amazon advertising. It doesn't need to be an expert in Amazon advertising, but they just need to have a basic understanding of the platform of Seller Central and blah, blah, blah. So those are our two things, Excel, Google Sheets, Amazon advertising, that's on top of the foundation. Now for you, you're gonna have something on top of the foundation. I don't know what it is, but it could be video editing, it could be, um, translations, it could be content, uh, I don't know, design, whatever it is that you're looking for. And you can also add in tags um, for certain skills that you're looking for, which is nice. Now, number five, test project. When you start getting applicants in the door, okay, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna post this job and you're gonna start getting applicants coming in the door who Here's, let me show you an example. Let's go to this one here. See some applicants. Okay, let's go to maybe this one. And I'm gonna try to blur out some information, but this is kind of what it looks like when someone applies to work with you, is they'll say, uh, this is the message they sent us. This is basically their rate, $636 for 30 hours per week. Um, and Simple as that, you can message them back. I recommend that if you wanna take it to the next step, you actually try to get them uh, in communication through email or through Skype or through anything not on onlinejobs.ph because it's just slow and it's kind of a clunky platform and you'll have much faster, uh, more efficient communication elsewhere. So. Now, once you've kind of gone through the interview process, I'm not gonna go into depth on interviewing this person. It's pretty simple. You hop on the call, you get to know, you get a feel for their English, you get a feel for their Wi-Fi, because if it's a really choppy call, I mean, maybe it's a stormy day. There's a lot of, uh, I forget what it's called, monsoons in the Philippines and storms and whatnot. So you kind of have to be accepting if it is a choppy call and it's a storm, that's normal. And there's always outages. There's usually once a month or once every two months, there's a one to two day Wi-Fi outage because of a storm, that's a normal thing, all right? But if it's generally pretty choppy throughout the whole call and there's not really any storm going on, I mean, you could ask them to reschedule, but 
you want to make sure it's kind of a smooth call. So the three foundations, check that on the on the interview. That's pretty simple. And then just ask them, you know, your basic interview questions about the skill set that you're looking to hire for. Now, here's the most important uh, step. And number five is give them a test project. OK, so if you've interviewed them, they sound good. Make sure you have a test project and see how they do going through that test project. Now, this shouldn't be something where you say, hey, I want you to uh, build me a beautiful blog post like that. It, again, if you're hiring for that, maybe you could do that. But what we like to do with our test projects is give some training, show them the process and then say, hey, can you do this process? And when you're done it, send it over to us and let us know how long it took you. We will pay you for the time and energy you spent on this test project. So if it took them two, three hours, we'll pay them probably $3 an hour, uh, $9, $6, etc. And then we'll review their work. This is great. So you want to get at least three or four applicants, give them the test project, see how they do. And that is more or less the process. Okay. So let's get into a little bit more intangible stuff. Um, how do you, uh, what should you give this person? It's pretty simple. I mean, again, I said earlier, I recommend start out with the super basic, monotonous, uh, repeatable tasks and move your way up or down the funnel to more complex, uh, things that will require more training. But if it's your first virtual assistant, just start very easy and then move to more complicated things as you uh, progress. Now, if what you're hiring for is generally pretty complex, well, then you don't have that privilege and you're going to have to figure out how to, you know, vet this person for whatever the complex thing is that you're trying to hire for. Um, so that's pretty simple. I can't really give much more advice on that. Uh, honestly, other than that. Now, step seven, actually back to step six. One thing that's very important is just, I, I don't really recommend giving a virtual assistant the task of creating a process or creating something as a test project. I recommend you give them an existing process and let them follow it and see how they do in following that existing process and just let them, ask them to tell you how long it took them to go through that process. That's pretty much what, what you're looking to do for a virtual assistant. If you're hiring a developer or someone else, it could be totally different. Now, the seven whys, who, what, where, when, and why, who, I mean, virtual assistant, but you can find way more than uh, just virtual assistants on this website, onlinejobs.ph. This is pretty much just a website that sources talent from the Philippines. And there's all sorts of talent. There's developers, there's content writers, there's general virtual assistants, there's specialists of every single kind, and they are absolutely amazing. So that's the who. The where is onlinejobs.ph. The what is, I don't know, I guess pretty much someone who can help you save time. Uh, why, again, save time, efficiency, when, as soon as possible, assuming that you've done the math and you can afford it. So that is it. Hire your first uh, virtual assistant. It's really not that hard. It's as simple as it, it sounds in this video. And if you found value, if you enjoyed this, uh, hit the subscribe button, check out some of the other videos on the channel. This channel is dedicated to helping you grow your agency. If you're running an agency or a service-based business or a consulting company, whatever it is, that is what this channel will help you do is scale that. All right. Much love. Thank you so much for watching this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.